My dad and my mom originated from Syria in the 60s. My father came here, he studied here, he uh, opened up a small business off of Cerritos, and then slowly that business grew. It's definitely boomed in the last 30 years that it wasn't really anything when we first opened here. When I was a kid, it was nothing, and now it's a bunch of restaurants and other stores and clothing stores. It became a destination because people longed for what their family used to cook back home. Our meat section is probably the biggest uh, department that we have here. A lot of people come just to buy our meat because it's halal. So they would come here looking for a specific type of food that they didn't have in regular American grocery stores. It's nice to be recognized when, it, when something has been here so long, when the community has grown. Just like little Saigon or little Korea, all those, just like the, those are recognized, I think it's important that we're recognized or this area is recognized as Little Arabia. I think the designation is really good for our community so that we can all start to highlight our businesses um, as opposed to kind of just being under the cover of Disneyland and Angel Stadium and all the things that we're known for here. Now finally we have uh, an outlet for our own cultures and traditions and people can start to recognize us and not just be another business in Anaheim. My parents, they came from Palestine. They opened one of the first restaurants on Brookhurst. We've been here for 27 years and we serve authentic Mediterranean food. So the falafel that we make is very authentic because it has a lot of parsley. A lot of people um, in the Middle East, they usually put more parsley, that's the Palestinian way. Uh, Egyptians, they use fava beans, so it's less green. Now we have, there's so many immigrants over the past 10 years here, from students from Saudi Arabia to children from Syria. They've all come here to like start a new life, grow their futures, the education system here. It's a big melting pot of cultures, even within the Arab community. Everybody has like their own way of serving Arabic food. My mom, when she takes orders, she'll say, where are you from? Are you from Syria? Are you from Lebanon? Are you from Egypt? Then she changes her whole dialect. Now she's speaking Egyptian uh, Arabic. Okay, now she's done. Next customer, Syrian. Now she's speaking the Syrian dialect. We kept pushing for two decades, two decades of hard work to get this designation. We've spoken to 13 council members and three mayors over two decades to finally get this designation happen. Uh, how many Arabs American currently live here? That's a good question. Uh, the estimate is uh, in Orange County, uh, it's close to 90,000, but we don't have accurate number. And the reason why we don't have accurate numbers is because in the census, um, we are counted under white, and that needs to change. Having accurate numbers, having uh, accurate data will also uh, help us track civil rights abuses against the community. It will help uh, businesses uh, get federal loans because uh, it would be counted as a minority community. But being lumped under white uh, means that we're invisible. And we, we don't want to be invisible. So to us, it's symbolic and it's going to uh, bring a lot of economic benefits and cultural benefits to I'm Lebanese American. My parents were born and raised in Lebanon and then came here and had me and my siblings. So I grew up here, but I go to Lebanon often, so I consider myself Arab American. Maybe because I wear a scarf or I more by my looks identify as an Arab. Now it gives people like, oh, okay, I know more about her and not just religion, but more about culture, which I feel like is important because when people look at me, they only see religion. So as a woman and because I look like that, now people know more about me and my culture. Give love, yeah, give love, y'all. One love, it's one love, y'all. Show love, to show love, y'all. Show love, to show love, y'all. Give love, and give love.